Hi everyone, it's Dawn Fisher, Morning Glory Needleworks. Welcome to my 66 Floss Tube video. It is um, September 15th already, and I'm going to do my little blurb as always. Thank you to everybody who subscribed. I've gotten quite a few new subscribers. I'm very excited about that. Thank you for your comments. Um, if you just liked my channel, that's wonderful. I really appreciate it. And as always, all the links, I'm going to have one link, I think this time, um, they are in the description area. You may have to hit like more to expand it. And um, I have links to the Morning Glory Needleworks Etsy shop, um, Instagram, Stitch of the Month Facebook group, Morning Glory Needleworks Facebook group, buy me a coffee and bio.link, which actually has all those in it also. So I also break my video into chapters. So um, you can, after you've watched the whole video, because I want you to do that, um, when you come back, you can rewatch or just um, if you want to jump to a certain section, click on the timestamp. It will take you directly to that section of the video. <gasps> so there, that that's out of the way. So it's the 15th of September. Um, there's nothing major going on. Yay! It's nice, um, you know, that everything's pretty level right here. I did get my... Um, flu shot and my COVID vaccine in the same arm. So it's a little sore, but hey, if that's the worst of it, it's really not too bad. Um, so I've been looking at um, EGA seminar for next year. I, I mentioned that it's in Dallas and I, I'm just trying to decide if I'm going to go. And if I do go, which I probably will, um, I'd I don't know what I want to do. Um, I know I want to have my pop-up shop again for at least two days because that was very successful. And hopefully I'll have a lot more cool stuff to take. Of course, it's not till next November. So who knows? Um, 2025 November, not this coming November. Um, and I may consider having the pop-up shop for three days. I don't know if I want to go for four days or five days. It's a two-day drive there and a two-day drive back. So that adds into um, my travel, my time away, especially away from the kitties and stuff. Um, so I, I'm not sure, you know, what I want to do. I stayed four days at National. I would have loved to stay another day and almost wish I would have. But um, anyway, I don't know. I got lots of time. Registration is open now. So you can register. And um, so, you know, I I looked at all the classes. There's some I really like. There's one two-day class I would really like to take, but it um, it's kind of the two days I wanted to have my pop-up shop. I wanted to have them the first two days because I, I just feel it's easier that way. And then the last two days or four, three days, however long I decide to stay, I can just relax. So I'm planning on, there is one one day class I'm interested in, but I think I'm just gonna do stitch in time. Maybe pop up shop two days, stitch in time two days, and I can just sit and relax and stitch. And they have a lot of fun little classes. I talked about that, little demos, not classes really, demonstrations um, in stitch in time, and you get little goodies and door prizes, but it's just a nice relaxing atmosphere you just sit with other people you don't even know when you get to know them and you just stitch so um I'm still rolling that all around in my head so um meanwhile because I have another retreat in October and I needed to restock I got these last time you remember my fabulous flea market finds last time well next time um October 1st, wow, I'm going, uh, hopefully I will have more wonderful flea market finds because I'm planning to go to Mount Dora to Renegers um, Antique Market. I've talked about this before. It's a huge antique market up in Mount Dora, which is a, about a two hour drive. So it's, it's not a short drive. Webster's a little over an hour, depending on traffic. And, um, Renegers Mount Dora is about two hours. So, but the good thing is, is um, 
the Renegers, it doesn't open till eight. It's not an early, early morning market like Webster is where you have, you know, you you want to be there when they open. They open at seven and people are there way before seven. I mean, uh, um, I got there at eight and people were leaving with stuff already that they had bought or taking loads of stuff to their cars. So um, anyway, they're having what they call their summer yard sale. I I haven't been to any this year, I don't think. Jeffrey and I had gone to a couple of them many years ago, but it's it's not like big. There are dealers there, but there's also just people that have yard sale stuff, smaller uh, flea market type vendors and that type of thing where you can get stuff at a pretty reasonable price. You never know what they have. They're not people that are there all the time. So this is our last one of the year. And it's actually a, a three-day event. So you know, you don't have to rush to be there because at Webster, it's an early morning market. Like I said, they're open, they open at seven and some, because it gets so hot out there, a lot of times they're leaving at noon or one o'clock, packing up and leaving the outside vendors anyway. And this one, it's um, from eight to four and it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So I'm gonna, I'm planning on driving up Friday and spending Friday there and just taking my time, taking it easy. I don't have to rush around. I can spend a little more time digging through and looking at stuff. And um, I can um, just come home in the afternoon. And the nice thing about that is now everything's, uh, the yard sale part is outside. They do have several covered pavilions, which are nice. They're not air conditioned, they're open. but. They are covered so you can get out of the sun and the tree, they have a lot of trees and that provide shade. So it's a little cooler than being out in a huge open field with no trees in sight. So, and they also have the antique marketplace, which is huge. Uh, they have hundreds of vendors in there. So I can go in there, that's air conditioned. I can go in there and sit and rest or walk around. They also have a wonderful little cafe that has like burgers and they have really good like chicken salad and that kind of stuff. So, and I can get drinks, um, which I will bring, but still. Uh, so anyway, I'm I'm excited about that. So I'm gonna go spend the day up there um, walking around, hopefully find some stuff. So hopefully I'll have some cool stuff to show you um, next time. Hopefully I'll find some more really cool stuff at reasonable prices. That's the tricky part is um, reasonable prices because um, that way I can sell them to you at a reasonable price. Okay, that's enough of that. So I haven't been stitching very much. I'm, I've been, I've had a hard time. I don't know, since I've moved, I haven't really, other than my little project I'm gonna show you. This is the, um, miniature um beekeep miniature beekeepers miniature sewing box i showed this to you last time and i've gotten quite a bit further on it it's a fun stitch but i don't work on it much here i don't know i'm just i think it's moving my trying to get my brain back into settling um i have the uh, four sides of the box all stitched i'm very excited so i have to stitch the bottom, which has, will have my name on it and, and the year and whatever I want to put. And then the top, which will have actually a little, a large bead with a little bee charm on it. And it just has a, like a circle of flowers around or square of flowers. But anyway, here are my sides. Aren't they cute? If you can see them, all the different stitches, you can see it. So it says no bees, no honey, no work, no money. And each of the hives are a different stitch. And these were all supposed to be one stitch, but I think I tried the stitch and I didn't like it. And it's mine, so I can do whatever I want with it. So I, each one of these hives, one is this stitch and one is this and one is this. And they are like, um, there's a straight satin, a slanted satin, um, trying to remember what all the stitches are but anyway they're all different stitches so these I went ahead while I was I was stitching with some friends um, a couple weeks ago on a Saturday 
and I finished this and then I, I basted it. Actually, this isn't basted, it's um, stem stitch around the outside. So I figured while I'm doing stem stitch, I just went over and did, so, you know, one's gonna be the top and the bottom and then the inside of the top, but that is not stitch. That, that will still be blank. And then there's two little um, bees that you make into a uh, scissor fob. So anyway, that's what I've been working on. So it's, I'm very excited um, about it. It's fun, but now I may get all this stitched, but actually putting it together, now that's another story. I'm not very good at that. Oh, I also wanted to show you when I was in EGA National, I told you um, I had ordered a, the name tags for next year, just because they're so beautiful. And I I got my kit in the mail. Now you, they are so much prettier. The picture does not do this justice. It's all, um, I have not done this kind of beading before, so it should be fun. I have a little kit. I took a little class or had watched a demonstration and um, showed how to do the beading. So I'm sure with videos, YouTube, I will figure this out. I just need to be in the right mindset and probably sitting here in my sewing room instead of sitting on the couch because I don't want beads going everywhere. But it comes with this beautiful chain and it, now it may look gold, but it's actually a rose gold. And then it has the most beautiful sparkly beads. It, I'm telling you, it's gorgeous. And these wonderful um, uh, other big uh, hanging beads. It's So this should be fun. I just need to figure it out. And then there's a little scissor fob that you can make. And I would probably make that first. <laughs> so anyway, that's something um, I need to work on because I would wear that next year at EGA National. It was, they had, um, cause they bring things to sell. So I bought a few things, but I think I talked about the coffee cup I bought. And then I bought this, they brought 75 of these with them and sold out. So like the second day they were sold out. So I, they sent mine to me. So I'm, I'm really excited about that. So Anyway, um, so that's that's what I've been working on again, not much, but um, anyway, so now I, I had talked about it last time about showing some items I'd found again in my um, in my collection in boxes as I go through them because things have been packed away. Some stuff was packed away a long time ago. Some, you know, it's just I have a lot of stuff. So anyway, I was going to show some of the things I found um, as I was going through boxes and I actually found a few more things. So I have a few different things to show you. I mean, they kind of run the gamut. Now this one, this one is one of my favorites. This is something different. Now, I don't know about you, but my grandma used to make these sock monkeys and I need to find it. I have... a teeny tiny one she made me it's the only one I still have that she made for me and it's it's tiny it's made it's like this wide and it's got skinny little legs and a tail but it looks just like this they had those little socks that were tiny I think she made the elephants sometimes too but when I was going through stuff I had bought if you buy these socks, I can't remember. I used to wear these. I used to work in a factory back in the 70s and it was just dirty and nasty. And um, it was automotive um, stuff, insulation and things. So I would wear these um, socks. But anyway, I found these and I had made, I'd made a sock monkey, I think for a couple of my nephews, but I haven't made one in years and I found this and I, I, sh I should make me another sock monkey. I do have a couple that I've collected. I have a little, um, I have a boy sock monkey who's older. And then I have another cute little girl sock monkey and they used to sit in a chair together. And the, um, the little girl has got like a patchwork quilted dress. It's so cute. And then the little teeny one sits in her arms and those are in a box somewhere. So I, I had to show that just because that just brings back so many memories because grandma made all that stuff. 
for us. And she made it. She sold it, uh, Barbie doll clothes and that kind of stuff. She did all that, too. So let me move on to something else. This is kind of interesting. When you just look at it, it doesn't look like much. But on the bottom, it's a non-spillable button box patent applied for. But isn't that cool? So, and being me with all my buttons, and this is what it looks like. So there's plastic, and then you just turn it, and the hole, here's the hole, and it opens up to that section, and you can pour your buttons out. Otherwise, you have it turned, and it goes there, so nothing can come out. But isn't that cool? That's the only one of these I've seen. Um, and the it, it reminds me of like an old powder powder puff thing. The top's kind of ugly, but um, I don't know if it was covered at one time or what, but the top's not very pretty. But anyway, so that's something kind of different that you don't see every day. I also have this cute little sewing kit. You can see it's, uh, I think this is probably silk because it's being worn away and eaten away. But this is one of those little... Um, sewing kits that folds up. Isn't that just cute? It's got a little teeny tiny pair of scissors. They're in pretty rough shape. They're pretty rusty. And the whole kit has some issues, but it's got it's got a little stand in the middle. You would put your thimble on that. And then it has other um, little pieces to hold packets of needles or whatever you have. But the inside is um, I think it's a, a woven cotton, but these this is um, silk. But isn't that cute? And it just it just folds right back up, and you can just keep it in your purse and snaps closed. I also found this is in rough shape too. This is an eyeglass case. See, in the back, but it's all decorated. It's probably Victorian. I don't know if it's one of the Iroquois, the Indian ones. It, it looks a little a little more delicate than those usually are because I have a few of those Iroquois ones too, but I just thought that was really pretty. It's in, it's in rough shape, but it just sits in the cupboard and people can look at it. I just bring it out to show it sometimes. So here's another fun little, one of these round um, sewing kits. I've made one of these. I took a class from Mary Cox and it was the same type of idea. It's got some spools of thread. There's, um, what else is in here? Oh, just more thread. It has, uh, this is wool for um, to put your needles in. You can see a lot of needles rusted in there. There's a bodkin and there's um, all sorts of places to slide more bodkins and other things, maybe an awl in there. It's not real pretty, but it's in it's in decent shape. It's it's a little worn, but it's old, like me. So it may be older than me. I don't know. I also found these. Um, I can't find the marking on them. These are a little pair of scissors in their case. Unfortunately, you can see the the tips don't close. It's um trying to get it to focus, but it the tips don't close tight. So I don't know if you could even fix them, but they're pretty, they're real plain, but they are um, somewhere on here, they're hallmarked. They also have an initial on them. It says it's got a C, a script C on it. And this, this has actually got a little bit of padding in it. It's probably some wool or something some felted wool, but they're fairly plain, but they they fit in here really nice and it goes together. They need to be polished. So I'll have to dig my silver polish out and get them polished up. I left the tag on it because it does have information on, it says it's um, Hallmark. Like I didn't look for the Hallmark yet. I probably did when I bought it. I also have this wonderful little clamp pin cushion this is wood. It's in really nice shape. And you would clamp this on your table. This doesn't turn very easy because it's probably swollen up because it's humid. Um, but you would just put your the edge of your table or whatever in there 
and you could clamp this to it. And it has this sweet little pin cushion in it. Sometimes they have like sewing birds or something on the top or a clamp or something to hold your hoop. I had one of those, which I actually sold at EGA National, but this one's in really, really nice shape. Um, the, the velvet's a little worn, but it's not too bad. The um, pins have kind of rusted, so I probably should take those out, but that's that. And it's, I was looking to see if it was labeled. Sometimes they have labels on them, but I don't see, I don't see a label or a name on it. But anyway, that's a real fun little item. These are things you can look for in, you know, when you go to flea markets and things, sometimes you can find them. Um, people don't know what they have, or I've, you know, that happens to me a lot because I know a lot of these things. Um, so I know what to look for. And as you collect stuff, you will know what to look for too. You'll be able to tell if it's newer or older. Sometimes it's hard to tell, but um, just, you know, and I bring them home and then I start, thank goodness we have the internet now because I start doing research and um, trying to find more information on the different items. A lot of times I look to see what they're selling for to see if I got a good price or oops, I didn't, you know, that kind of thing. So a while back, I showed some perforated paper bookmarks, trying to get it so it doesn't glare on it. But there's, oh, you can see the screen there and the stuff hanging on the wall there. Maybe that's a little better. But this is like a cat sitting on a pillow. And then it's got a silk silk band behind it. They're, they're very worn. And this is really cute. Little Two little birds with a little flower. And it has the initials MB at the top. And then at the bottom, it has the name stitched Filipina. Filipina probably um, her friend's name. Dang it, that reflection's really bad there. There we go. So anyway, but it, it's very cute and it's, it's framed, you know, it's not fabulously framed, but it's good enough that I can leave it in here. I found another one that's framed and it's bigger and it has a lot of them, but a lot of them have fallen off. I don't know how they were put on there, but they've fallen down and gotten banged around. So that one, I'm just oops, just gonna kind of leave for a while. And this is another nice one. This says, um, it says Holy Bible at the top and the middle little teeny bookmark says, Jesus loves a little child. And I don't think, I don't think the one on the bottom says anything. It's hard to tell because they are very worn. You know, this one is wool and a lot of the wool has been um, worn away. Oh, that's filthy. Yeah, I guess I need to clean the glass. But these are all on perforated paper. Very fine. This one is really fine paper. And it's hard to find that anymore. Uh, it's usually like a 14 count. I, I believe I heard somebody was carrying like 18 count. But this... This one is very fine and it's probably in the 20s, 20 count at least. I have to get my magnifier out and see if I can um, get it. But this, it's hard to see because it's kind of a, um, a golden color. So it's hard to see on there, but these are kind of fun. I love the frame. Um, again, I have not unframed it. That looks blue in the screen, but it's actually black. Um, black. I think it's paper. You know what? It's not. It's cloth. This that this is um fabric, cotton cotton fabric on the back. Again, I haven't haven't opened it up. I'm just kind of peeking under the edge here, but it's kind of glued down. So I'm just going to leave it that way for now. Now, when I was at um. Stitch Florida 24, I talked about that I had bought a couple of the reproduced DMC um, books that had um, different alphabets and things in them. And I remembered in the back of my head that I had some. So I found them. These are some I bought. These are originals. Now, I don't have a year on this. Now, this one, I have three. 
they're in Spanish. They, I looked them up online. Um, it's Biblioteca DMC um, Punto de Marca. Excuse my accent. I have, I don't, you know, but it's definitely DMC. This one's in pretty good shape, but there is no year on these. Now I did some research and I'm trying to find out. Now I know it says here, Bazaar Ingles Habana, Habana, and it's 25 cents. So it was a long time ago. And so I don't know if this is from Cuba. That's why it says Habana on it. I don't know. But um, anyway, it's all in Spanish. So here's, there's the front page, but there is no year anywhere in here. I um, Some of the ones I looked at said the copy they were selling, one was from 1974, one was from 1965, um, some were from the 50s, some said 20s. Um, I found one that talked about them and they said these started in 1895. Now, I don't know what those look like. I don't know. Um, this is series 5A, 5A series. I have um, 4A series and 3A series. And some are in better shape than others. And again, they're all in Spanish, no year, um, but they do have some pretty cool um, patterns. This one has nice, alphabets. So I was very excited when I saw that. Some fun alphabets. And it shows you how to put the two alphabets together for um, initials. So it's kind of fun. And these, oh, my book is falling apart. These also, these two alphabets fit together. So um, I mean, how cool is this? This is, and it's got some beautiful let me hold this up very carefully here. Look at these wonderful, wonderful patterns. I love this with the ship, the train, the, um, is that a Zeppelin? I don't know. The motor cars, the bicycles. I love these little cartouches. They're all, they're all just wonderful. And you kind of pick your own colors. There's tons of borders, all different borders. So you can um, design your own sampler. Showed that already. Trying to be careful because this is it's kind of falling apart. I need to find something um, to put it in. And if anybody can read Spanish, there's a whole bunch of information here. I'll be glad to copy it and send it to you, and you can tell me what the heck it says. Now this here says 1907 to 1908. So I don't know if that's when the book came out or just the years they put in there. I don't know if they put different years in all the time. Here's some other wonderful alphabets. So that is the 3A series, and that's a red book. And then this one is actually much, it's much thicker than the other, and this is 4A. And this one has a lot of people in it. Again, the pages are falling out. So this has cute little people but it also has wonderful um, alphabets that you can put together. I think I'll have to look and see if I can figure out where this goes in here. This has a little bit more detailed, um, some more alphabets, but detailed borders and uh, a diagonal alphabet, which I love. That would be pretty in the corner of a handkerchief or something. Um, I think that goes in the front, but this one has a lot of little people in it. A lot of nice, um, these are what they call like diaper patterns, which fill an area. And then some other fun um, patterns in it. Just looking to see what else. And here's, um, this is, I think it's a list of all the books you can get. Or maybe it's, I don't know. I don't speak Spanish. I really wish I did now. But there's some real, these are much more colorful, whereas the other ones are um, just like red and green or um, a couple colors. 
this one um, has, there's some really wonderful, wonderful designs in here. So if you ever see any of these now, like I said, a lot of them have be, been reproduced. They're smaller, um, much smaller than this, maybe about half this size, but there's some nice stuff in here. I lucked out. Um, these were selling online for 20, 20 to $30, depending, plus shipping and all that. I picked these up somewhere at a flea market, I think, and or an antique store, and he, they were, I think they were three dollars each. So you just have to know where you're, you know, you just have to look. So anyway, this one um is this one's in pretty good shape here. This has again some really nice alphabets. Oops, need to put that page back in the book here so I don't lose it. Um, some nice bands again for edging or um, band samplers or whatever. Oh, it has insects. Isn't this fun? Bees and beetles, dragonflies, grasshoppers. What fun. Bumblebees, little fuzzy bumblebees. Also here, there is, if you can see them, there's ants. Let's see what else, ants, butterflies, dragonflies, all these cool. So again, this is just, like I said, something you can look for when you're out and about. These have a lot more detailed um, patterns, again. I would say this is probably a later series and the ones with the Roman numerals are probably, because that's 4A, are probably a newer, or I mean an older series. So, um, oh my goodness, there is, um, Penguins, walruses, lions, all sorts of fun creatures. But that, um, there's a lot of words. Oh my goodness, chicken. I'm just so excited here. Turkeys, chickens. I'm obviously easily amused. And this page. It looks like they're doing Ring Around the Rosie or maybe a May Dance or something. And the cute little, looks like elves or something. Let me see my pages are falling out. But that is, um, again, that is that. This one is 5A. And this may be a newer one. I think some of the plainer ones are the older ones. So that was my fun stuff I wanted to show you. Things I'm finding it's quite a wide wide variety of items and that's kind of how my collection is i don't collect just one thing i find now of course samplers are my go-to um but if i find cool little things that i like especially if i can find them at a reasonable price i um i buy them i've i've cut way back i mean what last the last couple times i've gone like when i went to webster this is the only kind of stuff I bought, just stuff for resale, because I have so much stuff already. I mean, if something jumped out at me and it was really spectacular, I might consider getting it. But I just, and I, I, last time I went, I was really tired and didn't sleep well the night before and I wasn't feeling well and it was hot. So anyway, that's that. So um, thank you again to everybody who watches my videos, likes, comments, um subscribes be sure to subscribe and you'll be notified now my videos come out um well last earlier this month they were kind of wacko because i had some stuff going on but they usually come out on the first and the 15th of the month on the first of the month i talk about my usual stuff and then i do a new stitch of the month which here is the one i did for september this is basket stitch. So uh, for October 1st, we'll have a new stitch. I have no idea what it is. So if there's a stitch you want to learn, let me know. Um, like I said, be sure to um, join the Stitch of the Month Facebook group. And that's where the PDFs for all these stitches are located. This is my third year of doing these. So there's a lot of different stitch diagrams that you can um, get. This is the current, um, 
This is a September band. So each one of these bands is a different month. Um, so um, if you have any questions or anything, contact me again. I'm open for teaching. Um, I'm I'm so excited about teaching my new school of stitches next next February, knock on wood. I'm supposed to, and I'm also sending out proposals to teach other places also. And then I have this new idea in my head, which is like totally different from most of my other stuff. It's not really a sampler. So I'm excited. But that's it for floss tube number uh, 66. Again, thank you for watching and I will see you on the 1st of October.